Welcome to Basic Brewing Video. I'm James Spencer. I'm Steve Wilkes. We're here at the at the hop yard with, with some bad news and some good news. The, the scene of destruction. That's right. Devastation. Earlier this year we had the, uh, the ice storm come through and tear up all our trees. Yep. And here this summer we had the uh, Japanese beetles come through and tear up my hops. Yeah, I'm telling you. Here in the past, uh, uh, this is the fourth year, I think, for my Cascades, and this is the first year that the Japanese beetles have attacked them. Mm -hmm. And they were really voracious this year and got on there and not only tore up the leaves, but were eating the hop cones. And I think it may be the result of uh, uh, defensive measures that my wife has been uh, and doing on you know, her roses That's and crepe myrtles and things like that. And they, they can't eat those because they've got seven dust or seven liquid seven whatever all over them mm -hmm. so they've moved on to the the hops which are apparently left less delectable to them but they'll eat them nonetheless but so sustaining so they're, yeah. they're isomerized beetles yeah they're they're bitter yeah. <laughs> but they are now the birds won't eat the beetles because they're so bitter yeah, that's right well if you've never seen a japanese beetle they are kind of a pretty thing they're green and kind of brown and shiny mm -hmm. and and uh once they move into your area, apparently you've got them forever. They come in with uh, turf yeah. and decorative plants, so that if you've got a lot of development in your area, you're more likely to have them. Yeah. Uh, but they, the grubs come in those, that vegetation, and uh, they mm. set up residence in your yard, and in our case, the neighboring pastures and things like that. So. They're like the cold sore of the insect world. <laughs> Once you got them, you got them <laughs> <That's> forever. <right. laughs> Yeah, oh. and, it, and they are occasional outbreaks, so uh, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> we just need some Valtrex for, for <laughs> Japanese beetles. Uh, well, there is Valtrex for Japanese beetles. Well, so I found a solution. I finally yeah. found a solution. I didn't want to put any kind of pesticide on there, so what I did was I uh, got a solution of dishwashing liquid, just a little bit in there, and uh, sprayed it on the leaves and on the hops, and apparently uh, the Japanese beetles don't like the taste of soap. So, uh, but you have to be sure and reapply that every time it rains. And actually, even you know, in our climate, we have a very heavy dew fall. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to continuously keep up with that. Yeah, yeah. So unfortunately, I was out of town a lot during the the onsla uh, onslaught mm. of the pests, and and my hops are pretty much done. So the yeah. good news that was the bad news. That was the bad news. The good news is that I had a bunch of hops uh, from last year in the freezer. So I had Ziploc, or not Ziploc, but I had vacuum packed them, yeah. and I had uh, uh, put them in the deep freeze, and so I decided to brew a celebratory pale ale celebrating the homegrown hops uh, as they would have been if they had survived. <laughs> so what we have is um, a pale ale with 10 pounds of Maris Otter, one pound of uh, 60 Lovabond Crystal, mashed at 154 degrees Fahrenheit. And then uh, at 60 minutes, I put one ounce of uh, Willamette pellets uh, just to get some bit solid Bitter. bitterness in there. Uh, then, are you ready? Uh, at 30 minutes uh, from the end of the boil, I started adding uh, an ounce of homemade, home, homemade, homegrown Cascade every five minutes. So at 30 mm. minutes, 25, 20, 50, so, and then one ounce at the end of the boil. So, seven ounces wow. of homegrown. During the last 30 minutes. That's right. You couldn't possibly put any more hops in than that. <laughs> That's what I was thinking uh, as I was well, scooping them all out at the end. Yeah, um, how much uh, work did you lose? <laughs> you get like a three gallon batch out of that? <laughs> well, I actually uh, had to take some defensive measures uh, there. Um, Thank you. We'll drink this before it gets too skunky here in the in the sun. I hope I hope we're not just shadows to you. The sun mm. keeps coming in and out. But what I did was I took uh, I scooped out the hops at the end of the boil after I chilled, scooped them into a strainer, and then used a sanitized ladle to squeeze like out as much work as possible. Yeah, yeah. So that, seven ounces of whole hops is a lot of hops. Yeah. So, cheers. Cheers. It's got that wonderful uh, big nose, big citrusy nose. Mm. Oh my goodness. 
Well, that's really good, James. <laughs> now, that's outstanding. If you were to take, thank you. Uh, if you were to take seven mm. ounces of commercial Cascade hops and use them like this, I would think that it would just blow you away. I would too, and I'm surprised at how not bitter and not over the top that this is. Mm -hmm. It's really delightful. Thank you. I think that that it may be too hot even for the Cascades here in my yard in the full sun in the Northwest Arkansas summer uh, because uh, like I say um, commercial Cascade hops I think would be a whole lot stronger than this. So you don't have any way of finding out uh, we don't know what the alpha acid is. No we could we, we could send, send them off. off to be tested yeah. if we wanted to, but, yeah. you know, I know that this makes a good beer, so I can duplicate that. Absolutely. But one, one uh, positive thing is that uh, I was worried that using that much uh, mm. hop vegetation would give us like a grassy or vegetal flavor. Do you get any of that? Uh -uh. I don't. I get a citrus. Well, let me back up. If I do, it's a really... It's a kind of like a grapefruity, mm -hmm. which you would expect. Right. But I, I definitely get that there is some citrus, but I don't get grass. Right. I don't get like I'm chewing on some grass. Here. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's a, that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. That's some actual useful information that maybe you mm. could use. So, you know, like I say, bad news on the home hop growing front, but good news in that there's more in the freezer. Yeah, no kidding. I went online and saw that there was quite a bit of chatter about uh, the uh, Japanese beetle topic. Didn't have a lot of time to look at it, but I was thinking, um, I'm very fortunate at my house that we don't have Japanese beetles. Mm. I don't know why, but we don't. I could. But if, uh, if you have them, I think that the best advice would be to call your local county agent, county extension agent, and talk about your area. Mm. Um, I think James's solution is absolutely right, the, the soaps are um, real common for controlling aphids and things like that. And that would certainly work for the um, for this purpose because you wouldn't want poison. I wouldn't right. want poison on my stuff. Yeah. I don't care what the manufacturer says. But, uh, but I would think that your local county agent could talk to you about your specific climate mm -hmm. and your specific area much better than uh, any amount of chatter on the internet could. And if you have solutions to, uh, to uh, Japanese beetle problems that you've found, yeah. uh, post it on our Facebook page. We have, uh, yeah. if you search for Basic Brewing Video and Basic Brewing Radio on Facebook, you'll find our Facebook page. And, and I've learned how to actually check the comments now, so <laughs> I'm actually <laughs> responding to people. So anyway. Well, James, this is a delightful beer. Thank you. I really do like this a lot. It's just as clean and it's got all that great hop stuff going on. And I'm not a big fan of just overly, of just really bitter mm -hmm. beers. I really don't care that much for the giant, bitter, slam me down beers. But I love a lot of hops. And this is the way that I like my hops. So good job. Thank you, sir. That's it. That's it. From the hop yard. Until next time. Cheers, everybody. Happy brewing. Happy brewing. Come and visit us on the web. At basicbrewing.com, you can find archive lists of both our audio and video podcasts on home brewing. You can also find our DVDs, Introduction to Extract Home Brewing, Stepping into All Grain, Low Tech Lagering and Decoction Mashing, and our latest edition, Introduction to Wine Kits. Drop us a line. We'd love to hear from you. Write to james at basicbrewing.com, steve at basicbrewing.com, or just use the contact form on basicbrewing.com. I got a bug in my beer. I got a bug in my beer. And I can't get it out. <laughs> <laughs>